Hi hey everyone, in today's video we're going to have a look at social, moral, moral and ethical issues. So this is a topic that's going to come up in paper 2, the hour and a half paper that you do. So what you need to know basically, what, what is meant by the actual term like social issues, moral issues and ethical issues, how companies might consider these issues in terms of like building their actual culture of their company. And it's more about also having an understanding of real life applications of how this is applied in industry and you can give examples basically so basically i'll go through a little bit of definitions and i'll give you a few different examples to, to think about essentially so difference between social and moral and ethical issues so social issues are typically to do with like the environment that we live in health poverty so to do with like poverty how like different affluent areas discrimination between things like race gender age those sorts of things and unemployment those are like social issues Moral and ethical issues are a bit more difficult to sort of define because these are to do with like people's beliefs of what is right and wrong. So like ethical issues being that you don't advertise like smoking nowadays or you don't uh, promote violence in kids cartoons or um, understanding not to kill and not to steal and all those sorts of things. Which obviously some of them sound quite obvious like oh yeah don't kill. Duh. But um, obviously <laughs> that's like an extreme example. Don't kill, by the way. Um, but yeah, so moral, moral and ethical issues are more to do with like rights and wrongs and that type of thing. So some companies are very good at it, are like, very, very aware of the responsibilities they have to maintain like balance within their, their issues. There's something called the Corporate Social Responsibility, which is a scheme that's self-regulated, which companies basically, and they're given like a framework to work within to sort of show that they're meeting these responsibilities basically it's completely um voluntary you don't need to do it but it gives a really good sense of um, public image um because as we've talked in other videos and other lessons is yes companies care about like profits and those sort of things but also companies need to care about their public image because otherwise if you've got a poor public image um and a bad reputation you're not going to get that many sales we've talked about it before some companies were really bad there was that one clothing brand that just the guy came out and said i don't make clothes for fat people who cares about fat people and at which point their stocks just tanked immediately so a couple of examples that are really really good are lego and wwf and that's not wrestling um that is the will Weller foundation so lego um i've set a target of having 100 percent renewable energy um, by the time they get to 2030 and they're basically trying to get rid of using um, oil to, to kind of come up with a more sustainable raw material to replace crude oil by 2030. Disney also have quite a good reputation because they encourage workers to do charity work and provide quite a lot of support for natural disaster situations around the world so they send relief and all sorts to do around the world. So a couple of examples, but there are loads and loads of other examples of companies that do really, really good, positive things. But those are three, I mean, Lego, Disney, and are probably two of the big, or Disney is one of the biggest companies in the world at this point. They own half of everything. Um, okay, so the military. A little bit of a weird topic to bring up because you, you're either hit or miss with this. Some people are very anti-military, some people are very pro-military. It's not so much in this country necessarily. There are certain countries that are like very, very pro or very, very anti-military. I won't mention any names. <clears throat> um, but they're often criticised because they have quite a negative effect on the environment. Because essentially what will happen in a war zone or whatever, they'll go over, they'll set up base, they'll do whatever they do, and they'll leave again. And it's it's almost like you watch like the Marvel movies or you watch like Team America where they sit they turn up, blow everything up, go, oh, we've saved the day, and then they bugger off again. And they've actually left the land in quite a bad state. Um, so they, that's why they tend to get a bad, apart from the death of everyone as well. But they do tend to ravage the land quite a lot. However, because the military exists, there's been a lot of development of technology that has aided us massively in our day-to-day -day life. So without the military we wouldn't have things like radar the epipen so anyone that's got any severe allergies like peanuts that's sort the of thing without an epipen without the military you wouldn't have lived very long at all gps on your phones penicillin drones if anyone's got a drone they play with at home jet engines nylon synthetic material okay so the there are a lot of benefits to come out of the military as well. So the moral of that story is obviously you can't aim to please everyone all the time, particularly in this sort of woke PC culture that we live in now. Is If you stand for anything, you're going to offend someone. So you can't try and please everyone. Yes, the military do some bad things, okay? But also they do quite a lot of positives that have helped develop mankind, as cheesy as that sounds, but they've, they've been quite a driving factor in what's moved humanity forwards. 
So, sustainable materials and ethical production methods. So, obviously, at the moment, we still rely quite heavily on finite materials, so your fossil fuels, your coils, oils, and your gases. We do, I say we, like I'm involved in it in any way, shape, or form, but companies are looking at more sustainable sources. So, obviously, when you see, like, timber-based materials, so you see the FFC logo, the Forest Stewardship Council, that says it's been sourced in a uh, sustainable way, so obviously they cut down trees to make sure they plant more. Metal production is one that's considered very bad for the environment. Obviously, we don't do a lot of metal production in the UK because um, we don't have a lot of the ores, but the fact is you have to extract the ores, which requires a huge amount of mining, and it does a lot of damage to the landscape. So you end up with like, these huge mines, and they can also become quite dangerous because they can collapse, which can result in things like towns um, being like essentially like um, a landslide or floods. Um, that can actually kill loads of people. So there's been incidents where in Brazil in 2015 there was an old abandoned uh, mine that re resulted in a, a dam bursting and pretty much flooded an entire town and killed uh, pretty much everyone in it. Um, at the time, there was accused of being basically the reason that happened was that safety standards weren't met because honestly, the companies I can't remember which com uh, what country the um, company was from, but it was a first world country and obviously Brazil standards probably not quite as high as others and they thought oh no do it on the cheap and that resulted in deaths uh, and that's quite honestly that's quite a big story that goes along it's a lot of basically bigger com countries in more financially better off com uh, countries going to poorer countries that they can take advantage of and essentially killing a bunch of people um we do have other more sustainable materials so anyone that's into like uh, 3d printing now the most common material you get is pla which is polylactide acid which is starch based so it's no longer actually an oil based plastic which is becoming incredibly popular at this point and because last video i was very nice to apple i feel better now because i managed to get a bit of bad apple in there um so conditions for workers some companies get a very bad reputation for the work uh, the um state their employees live under um, obviously as I've just said before for the most part it's companies in richer countries that essentially outsource all their manufacturing to other companies other countries rather where they can get cheap labor Apple actually in this instance and this is one of the reasons why I actually dislike Apple quite a bit have got a terrible reputation for this because they have a factory in China where it had an absolutely insane um, mortality rate because workers were committing suicide and the fact they had to put nets all along each floor to stop people from trying to jump off and kill themselves because the conditions were, they were paid so little and they had to live in the factories and had such nasty working conditions. So obviously, when this gets out, I mean, Apple are still one of the basic biggest companies in the world, but it hit their stocks for quite some time. And again, not just a hit on Apple as much as I do dislike Apple. Um, <laughs> don't know if I've mentioned it before. Um, there are companies that do this as well. They're not the only one. Of course, they're not. Um, essentially, any any company that's just all about the profits, obviously, they outsource it to cheaper places, and that's how you get it. Um, other times, there's been things like there's a carbide plant in Bhopal, India, where there was a methanol leak, which, again, was basically safety regulations were not met. met. They were drilling for uh, gas, and there was a massive leak, and essentially, it, leaked, it ended up in um, polluting the area, and again... <laughs> ended up poisoning quite a large city in 1984 and there are still lawsuits going on around this. Okay, so culturally acceptable and non-offensive products. So in the marketing videos, we talked about why companies, obviously if they want to be global, you have to go into other company, other country, excuse me, other countries and sort of tweak your product slightly to be suitable to each country, depending on where it is. It could be religious beliefs, it could be all sorts of reasons. Um, but you can't make sure you're aware. And there are some times where companies will drop the ball quite a lot, and some of them are actually quite hilarious. So United Airlines, they set up their first long-haul first-class flight um, to go to Hong from Hong Kong. Um, so as they were trying to be, it was the first one to do it all nice and lovely. They sent out, they handed out like white flowers to each first-class passenger because they think, oh, that's nice and classy. In Hong Kong, Hong Kong though, white symbolises death and bad luck. Not really something you want to be given when you're about to go on a plane, I feel. And this is my favourite of all time. Um, I, I've mentioned this multiple times. There's a sporting brand that's very popular in Australia and India. Um, like Very, very popular. And this word means something very different in other countries. And they tried to launch that same product in the UK. Um, the brand is called Spunk. And it turns out people in the UK don't want the word Spunk written across their T-shirt. I cannot imagine why. So, products that are inclusive. Again, from a previous video we've talked about, you'll find there's a lot of links to previous videos here. 
So designers want to make a product aimed at as many people as possible, okay? One being obviously that it show, it widens your target market of people you can sell to, but two, again, it, as we said before, it gets a better reputation for that company because you're making products that are more inclusive to other people. So that can be things like having like better grips for people, making things more accessible with things like um, audible and tactile responses, so you get like clicks and lights coming on and textures and all those sorts of things. For more information on this, please do have a look at the Human Factors video. We go about that in a lot more depth, but a very, very good point about making things to be as inclusive as possible. So designing to help with social problems. So again, when we talked about this, could be more about like where you live, the income you have, that sort of thing. So things like, most common things would be things like litter. So obviously certain town centres litter is horrendous. So how can you sort of encourage people to do litter? You see nowadays, you see a lot of... Um, like places where people put cigarette ends and it tends to be like a little, little vote or who's the best footballer. Put your, bin, your thing in the bin, here for Messi or here for Ronaldo or here for, for whoever. Trying to just encourage people to recycle a uh, bin a bit, a lot more. Um, also, not to scare you because I'm aware that a lot of you are all starting to learn to drive. The most common deaths by driving happen when you are a lot younger because obviously you've not been driving as long. Susceptible to peer pressure for speeding a lot more. So having things like the black box, which if you're getting insurance now, you've all got to have it. Okay, having that as a design thing actually encourages you, obviously, to not speed and to drive sensibly because it affects your insurance. And then poverty and health, uh, well-being. One of the most common. Uh, almost famous products, rather, not common, sorry, um, to help with poverty is something called the Trevor Bayless Wind-Up Radio. So this was something that he came up when he was working in Africa. He is an engineer that essentially was aware that while he was there, um, there's no batteries, there's no power sources. So they couldn't receive broadcasts on information like um, medical aid for AIDS and that sort of thing. So he designed basically a wind-up radio that had a little widget and you wind it up and it would charge the battery. So it required no batteries whatsoever. It was just a wind-up radio, and then he made that free to millions, because I've not proofread my PowerPoint, as usual. Not millions, millions. And then there's a few other ones. So basically, I'm going to go through examples here. I won't read for all of them, but I'll leave them on the screen so you can have a little look through. So crowdfunding of certain projects like the gravity light. So the idea being that what you can do is you can pull the light up to the very top, and then as you release it, it pulls the light down and it charges the light up. So this is aimed in like in Kenya. So rather than having like a kerosene um, lamp, which was causing a lot of fires and houses getting burnt down, because it's in, obviously kerosene is a very, very flammable liquid. Um, you've now just got a chargeable light on the um, the cord. I can't think of the word cord there. You then also got a few other like design companies. So Yanko Design is quite a big design um, magazine and website where they're looking at like harvesting things like rainwater and homeless shelters and that sort of thing. Again, these are just sort of examples. You don't necessarily need to know these exact examples, but I'm just going to show you a few examples that you might um, be aware of or bring up in exams. Then you've got things like 3D printing in medical care. So what you can do, obviously, if someone has had um, a limb difference, if they are born with anything, um, with any limb difference, you can obviously get prosthetics custom made at this point, because it used to be back in the day. Um, obviously, because technology has gotten so more advanced in the past, you just have like a small, medium and large. And if you happen to be like a small child and you're, oh, you've only got a medium and you end up with this giant prosthetic arm, it doesn't really work. We've also got obviously people that have had injuries, so in, like car crashes, military accidents. You can actually have like schools um, rebuilt and that type of thing. Nowadays, if anyone knows anyone's had like hip replacements, knee replacements, rather than having a stock sized one, they can actually scan your body and get a proper custom made sized hip or an, an elbow or a shoulder or anything like that. You've then got things like MRI scans, CT scans, all these sorts of things have happened because of technology and how they've improved the quality of life. Um, artificial organs. So this is one thing there's always been a big old push for. Obviously, trying to help, obviously, particularly if you need like organ donor on waiting lists. There has been introduction of stem cells, which is quite a controversial one, particularly if you are someone from a more religious background, because obviously stem cells are, and I'm trying to remember the exact term, unborn fetuses or undeveloped fetuses, where essentially it's a blank cell, whereas if you put that blank cell next to a current healthy cell, it will duplicate. So the theory being behind this, so um, my dad, um, when he was alive, he had quite bad knees, so when he had his first knee injury, they removed all the cartilage. And then they suddenly decided that wasn't the right thing to do. 
So the idea being that, say, if you've got cartilage damage, what you can do is put stem cells into the knee cartilage or next to the knee cartilage, and it will grow more knee cartilage. And that, that footballers do that quite a lot. I say footballers, quite a lot of like, professional athletes do it. But at the minute, it's more in like Puerto Rico and Mexico and places like that where they tend to do this because it's still a little bit controversial, particularly in those more religious um, countries. It's also been patented, um, which is quite a, a controversial thing because actually you're trying to benefit mankind, but you're trying to charge an absolute fortune for it. So you, you kind of see that a little bit as well, whether you may have seen... And again, not to always rag on America, you know, medical care and the fact that people are like raising the prices of basic medicine, like inhalers. So basically, if you're poor, you essentially can't afford your medicine and you're just going to die. Again, quite an extreme example. I know I'm just trying to emphasize my point. Oh, OK, I forgot I put this on here. I'm not going to give my opinion on this, but this came out in 20, uh, last year, uh, July 2021. Okay, so obviously this re resembles Lego. Okay, so government saying Lego toy sparks backlash in the UK. It's now, I should point out, that Lego actually um, set up a lawsuit and forced them to withdraw it. It is illegal in the US to produce a children's toy that resembles a gun, but there's nothing wrong with making a gun look like a toy. I'm not going to give my opinion, although I imagine if I thought you, you probably know what my opinion is on certain countries and their beliefs. Obviously, it's a different culture than in the UK, um, where guns are not really a thing. Um, what are your thoughts, good or bad? I will leave that open to you. Answer is bad. Okay, and a few other examples. Um, I won't go through every single one, but um, we'll, we'll pick a few out of here. So, IKEA. So, essentially, they do like a flat pack battle shelter. So, obviously, IKEA are known for doing the flat pack furniture that you... Um, go and buy when you get your first flat or you go to university or anything like that. But they do like um, disaster relief shelters that they can enter like Iraq and Ethiopia and Macedonia and those sort of things. So they can build without tools and they'll sit like five people. So it's just a, a company that does normal day-to-day -day trading, obviously helping with disaster relief. Uh, you've got medical care. So the UN, they provide things like hospitainers and maternitainers, which essentially are um, massive containers, that essentially shipping containers that are just a bit, the interior has been adapted to have like medical care in them. Um, Fair trade, hopefully we all know about fair trade, so the idea being they're trying to protect um, producers, farmers, to ensure they're getting fair prices from supermarkets, so they're not getting undersell, so they can't afford to feed their family and that type of thing. Um, and then, top one, so this is like clothing donations, where some designers have come up with um, ideas, so that basically they'll have clothing that then can come off, and rather than being like a coat or a top at what, and during the day, and then it's sort of been taken and put into like a tent at night time, just taking products that can sort of be adapted in that sort of way. So you don't need to be able to quote any of those specifically, but it's just good to show you some possible examples and to think about essentially what social, social issues, moral and ethical issues are, right and wrong, and how companies and designers are doing their best to sort of improve the quality of life of the world. And it's, again, it's quite hard, certainly these theories, it's hard to not sound like you're on your soapbox being all like, ooh, power to the people sort of thing. But that's not the intention, but it's just understanding there is a greater reason for why people do what they do. Okay, so let's have a look at some exam question techniques. So using specific examples, evaluate the social, moral and ethical impact of mobile technology on society over the last 30 years. 12 marks, 12 minutes, have a go at planning and answering, and I'll go for the answer. So pause the video, answer it, and then we'll go through Okay, so 12 marks, so you probably will need a conclusion, realistically. Um, so say that's two marks. So I said six points here, so really it's what it probably is, actually, is you could do six points, because it doesn't specify, oh, it does actually evaluate there, so actually I'm a little bit wrong there, I apologise. So it should be two marks for evaluation, that's ten marks, so that's five points with um, positives and negatives. Cause remember, it's not said pros or cons, it's up to you to make your decision. So you can have things like the idea of it's safe because you can sort of have, um, you can call 999 a lot better, you're better connected, your emergency calls, you got sat enough so you can see where you're going, you got better access to information. However, it does have the idea of cyber bullying and cyber crime has risen dramatically. Um, reduction in literacy skills, which is definitely a thing because I've, I've marked exam papers and course where, where people actually write in text to speak now. So you could argue it's dumbing down people a little bit as well. And there's obviously the idea um, stalking gets a lot more as well. Um, there are suggestions that um, laptops, particularly if you're sitting it on your lap and using it, can damage male fertility and that type of thing. Um, 
it records your information a lot more. It does it can um, reduce your mental health a little bit if someone's like into your exercise and you've got like tracking apps and you go, oh, I've only burnt 300 calories or, or I've overdated on this. So there's loads and loads of possible answers you can go with. I really like this as a question personally because there's so many factors you can talk about. I'm after pros and cons. Obviously, mobile technology is fantastic, but there are other drawbacks to it as well. That because you're of the generation now, and again, make me sound old. Like mobile technology, I had a Nokia 3510 when I was in year nine. Okay, back when we had AOL dial-up broadband. Back in my day, um, but um, you've grown up with it. So I'm assuming when when you got your new first phone, up probably like eleven or twelve ish it was probably a smartphone to begin with that already had the internet so you've grown up with it all the way through so i'll be interested to see if you can come up with the, the negatives as well as just the positives okay next one discuss the social moral ethical issues facing product designers today same sort of thing again they haven't mentioned a conclusion i said you could put a conclusion but it hasn't specifically said a conclusion um so six points for the explanation potentially you could say just remember as well that you get you can't get the same marks twice. If you bring up a point, discuss it, and then move on to the, a different point again. So pause the video, have a good answering, and we'll look at the answers. Okay, so loads of possible things we've looked at. So things about using like child labour, safe working conditions, understand the impact of manufacturing or disposal of your product, uh, sourcing materials without damaging the environment, using sustainable materials. Um, not encouraging people to just like single use throw away products, not damaging wildlife and the environment, um, sustainable energy being used, designing for inclusivity, safety legislation. There are loads and loads of possible ones that you could have. Okay, that is the end of social moral ethical issues. Hopefully you found that useful. Any questions, please let me know.